What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to our Ethical Zoo franchise series in Planet Zoo. In the previous video, we added two different species of hyena to our zoo, and in this video, we're gonna improve our guest education and expand the Africa section of our zoo by introducing the black rhino. Ah, uh, looks like one of our striped hyena has just had a nice poop in the rain, and uh, it was all caught on the habitat camera. <laughs> That's what you want, isn't it? You wanna capture these precious memories. Brilliant. <laughs> they are very cool, though. So I, I wonder how they got on in the rain. I suppose they do live in a variety of environments. So they must, it must rain in some of them. Oh, and I can see we've got some meat on the floor. That was one thing I think I actually missed from this habitat was just putting in some, uh, some feeding uh, trays. I think it's trays they use, but I'm going to filter by the, uh, by the hyenas so we can actually see um, what, what they use. But I'm pretty sure what we've, we've got spotted hyena use the food trays and striped hyena also use the food trays. So yeah, I think I'm just going to put a large food tray in the, you know, in case they can't fill up the, um, the food enrichment, in case there's too much food, sorry, to fill up the food enrichment, uh, they'll just put this as like extra and then they can eat there because then they're confident around humans anyway, so they won't mind walking up to the glass. And it means our guests get a really good view of them as well, which is obviously a win-win. But, oh, there you go. The, the rain's cleared up now. Oh, and another one's pooping. Why is it every single time I zoom in on an animal, they decide <laughs> to, <laughs> to start pooping? I, I, don't, I don't understand. I must have that effect on people. I, I don't know how to use my superpowers, though. I'm not sure how I can use them for, for good or for evil. Either way. Yeah, look at the education. Actually, education is one thing I want to sort in this episode. So today, I want to try and put in the black rhinoceros which if we have a look at them, are critically endangered. So it's a really important species for this for this zoo. And I also want to improve our general education because you can see we're not doing amazingly on satisfying our guest need. And education is actually one of the big ones. So I do want to push that up. And then once we've sorted the guest education, maybe then we can move on to the guest happiness because I feel like that serves the animals best and it also serves us best a little bit because uh, the more the more educated they are on our guests, the more that they'll uh, donate and currently donations are a huge part of our income. Although I do imagine everyone thinks it's probably, yeah, quite cheap. So I think we should probably, um, we should probably put our ticket prices up. I'm just gonna do 52 and then 26. So it's half price for children and uh, 52 for adults. I think that's so expensive. I've only got to imagine that this is in like an alternate uh, universe where these these zoo credits, we don't understand the currency. <laughs> because once you get your zoo to like a decent size, you start charging like 80 zoo credits to enter. And I just feel like if it was 80 pounds, there is no way that would fly in the UK. I'm, I'm sure $80 would be similar, but I mean, how, how, let me know in the comments, what's the most expensive zoo you've been to? I swear it can't be anything close to, to what these zoos can get up to. So uh, we're just going to pretend that it's it's something else. Look at our cheetah walking around so majestic. Before we move any further, just because I know that the black rhinos are um, quite hard to get hold of, I'm going to have a look and see if we've got any now. Ah, oh, we've got two. Okay, it was good I looked. Um, they're both from Frontier Zoo as well, so they won't be related. I want to do a quick check on the Zoopedia for how long they live. They live to 40 years and they can breed until death. So that is actually perfect for us. These two are exactly what we want. So we're going to adopt both of these. And then we should probably... I'm going to hold them in the trade center for a second. I do want to send them to quarantine. But oh, I'm going to pause. Hopefully they haven't already bred. No. Uh, oh, why are they breeding though? These both seem a good age. This must be one of the children. How are you related? Let's have a look. Um, it's in a stud book. You can see the parents. Ah, oh, yeah, it's their child. Okay, so bingo should probably be released to the wild. We only get 10 because they're not actually endangered, but I think that's good. Right, they've been traded out of the zoo. I love this little habitat. With all our, it's like an Oceania paradise. <laughs> So I think we should start building the uh, the rhinoceros habitat and I want to do it here if possible um, to try and make use of this elevated walkway. So I'm going to have this continue around here. And then I do want to drop it down. 
So I'm going to have it drop down there and then be at ground level. And then we're going to have another path that runs alongside it that's uh, a more gradual ramp down. Something like that would be good, I think. And then if we come here and then back out, maybe. I'm trying to map around the edge. Um, I think this is probably a good size, but let, let's... Let's actually create the uh, the habitat with the barriers and then we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna do the same thing I've done for all of these African animals and copy the, uh, the fence we made here where we just put one log construction piece and then we decorated it up and then we're just duplicating that same piece. So it's exactly the same method and we'll just be continuing it on. Okay, I think that is a pretty large habitat we have here. Um, the should do the black rhinoceros quite nicely. And we've got little areas in here that I quite like. We can maybe have some bedding for them in there. I wanted to check whether they're confident. Oh, they are confident with humans. Oh, okay. So we perhaps don't even need that to be like a, a private bedding area if we covered it over the top. Um, but I think this gives really good coverage because the guests are going to easily be able to uh, to see them from this this elevation. And then also we can extend the path down here um, and have it run alongside this edge. And then the guests can actually like uh, can see them a bit more close up on the ground. So I think this will do do that perfectly for us. Um, I would like to improve the transportation links around the zoo if possible. Um, there's not a great way for them to get here other than to go along this route. So we will want to cut that short at some point. But for now, I think it will just be an inefficient route. And we'll see how many people come around here. I'm not expecting everyone to straight away. But when we fill out uh, more of the zoo, I think they will. And at the very least, I'm sure they'll come to here and, you know, and look out over the, the rhinos. So I think this is actually a really good spot for us. Now I'm going to send our rhinoceros to quarantine from our animal trading center. I'm going to select them, send them to quarantine, which will check them for any injuries or diseases they might have before they put them in the zoo. And then they can get immediately treated by our vets rather than waiting, which obviously wouldn't be uh, ideal or necessarily ethical for us. So I'm going to now put the barriers in to make this a proper habitat as far as the game is concerned. And again, I'm going to put the door as close to the keeper hut as possible. So I think I might actually try and put it here. Okay, that should be joined up now and we should have a full habitat. Um, the gate is facing the wrong direction. <laughs> oh yes, it is. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if I could switch that. I think I should be able to just click move and then uh, yeah, adjust it to be on this side. That's, that's fine. Let's put that in there. And now that should be good. We've got a massive habitat. That was one thing I should have actually checked was the natural habitat, but I knew I was gonna make it as big as possible. So let's say we've got two adults and then like three babies. They'll they'll have they'll need 2250 meters squared and we've got seven that we've got loads. So this should be a huge territory for them, which is exactly what we want, isn't it? You know? 
Like, they're, they're critically endangered. We're giving them a safe place that is all theirs. And uh, this is along the staff path as well, so it's nice and easy. I'm going to just add this into the work zone. Now we've created a new habitat. I'm going to put it in our Africa work zone that we made in the previous video, um, which is just going to be all these African animals over here. Um, I don't know where the... Uh, oh, no, I was thinking this was the platypus. I was like, that doesn't fall into Africa. This is the cheetah habitat, so we are absolutely fine. And then we also need to rename this habitat to be Black Rhino. And then we know who's going in here. I'm going to hit play to let everyone go through quarantine. Oh, is this the vet with one of our hyena? Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. I said in the last video as well, I don't know what to do about the hyena. If, the, if they're still fighting, we'll... Um, we'll uh, separate them we'll release one into the wild but we've got two females and two males and they should be able to live like that like the game says that that's absolutely fine it's just they keep seeming to fight for dominance so i don't know whether it's that we need like a much older one and a much younger one so that they don't do that or i don't know and maybe they're too similar in age that they're, they think oh yeah i'll try it on see if i can be alpha um and then it leads to lots of fights i'm not quite sure but it seems like to me like maybe that's the problem. However, we can't dwell on it. And I think while we wait for the uh, the rhinos to be ready, let's have a look at our education because currently I think it's pretty poor. <laughs> if we look at our staff, we have no educators right now, which means that no one is educating our guests on the wonder of our animals. I'm going to do the central hubs education first so we can do like one unit of the zoo at a time. Oh, it's nighttime. There we go. And uh, I think to do that, we need to kick that off with some media devices and education. And I'm gonna put animal talk points in. So these are places where our educators will do actual talks on our animals. I think this is a great spot for one round here. So I'm gonna put the educator right here. And then I'm gonna add some seating, some animal talk seating. And we could maybe decorate these to look a little bit more interesting. Um, but I'm going to put these in. And I don't think it likes the bin. So I'm just going to move that bin along. Duplicate this. And then we can have it be next to each other. Now, we can also uh, change the colour of the seating. So um, I'm wondering what colours it should be. It should maybe be like a green and yellow theme for this section of the zoo. Uh, maybe that should be should be grey still for somewhat realism. Or, yeah, no, it's concrete, isn't it? We can't pretend that that's wood. <laughs> I think that's quite good, though, for the, the South America section. Let's put one of these here. And we can have two little things of seating. And guests can also stand here. Now, we need to link them to the animal talk point. So let's select that animal talk point and confirm link. And we'll link this one too. And now when there's a talk on here, guests will come and sit here if there's space. And if there's not, they'll stand around as they normally would. The good news about putting it here as well is that we will be able to throw food in. So we need to select a species for that first. Let's have this side. This is the anteater side. Let's have them educate the anteaters. And then you can see they'll throw food. So when they're doing a talk on the anteaters, they'll throw food into the anteaters and people can watch it, which I just think is really cute. <laughs> um, I do want to decorate this very slightly, though, to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to make some decoration. And then we'll probably copy this design round to uh, somewhere else. I'm trying to think we could maybe have a talk with some seating over here, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to just because of where we built the zoo, um, unless we have the seats in here. So maybe we'll do something like that. Let me uh, let me see. We'll, we'll see what I can come up with here for this seating. <laughs>
Okay, we've just added in all of the uh, education stands for this habitat and the seating. Um, this is definitely a big step in the education. I just put two seating areas here because you can still watch the talk from here. It's still a decent like place to sit. So I think that'll be fine. And we do need to hire ourselves an educator. So I'm going to grab an educator from the end here and pop them down. Oh. Who is this? This is Sunny. Sunny is our educator. And then we can go into the work zones and add into the central hub these... Uh, these are these are education stands that we've just put in and then when we assign them to the central hub sunny will uh, automatically go to these and start doing them so let's assign sunny to the central hub now he will know that this is where it is um, we do need to put different times though so all of these are currently set to have a talk in march and he's only one man and can't necessarily do be in three places at once so we're going to have this one start in january uh, the giant anteater then we'll move on to the capybara in February and Then oh, I tell you what I normally leave a month between them Let's leave a month and have March that so gives them time to walk It's not very far, but it gives them time to walk to it for March and then uh, We'll leave a month and do May and Then we'll maybe leave a couple of months after that before we assign them to anything else uh, but that way there are uh, there's a pretty normal system going there for that um, and I don't believe some of these have power so we need to just check where the the power areas are okay there's one there there's one there and this one is almost there I don't know if that's just because this solar panel is no no that is fine okay we need to add another solar panel in that's a bit annoying or we move torque very slightly into the power so torque could go there uh, it's not as ideal for this area of seating, but you can still see into the habitat. I don't think it's that bad. To save us having to build a whole other solar panel, I just think we'd, we'd put it there. And if we hit play, that'll actually start. Now, I'm going to move our black rhino into their habitat um, because they might as well make the move over. They're done with quarantine. And we've got some spotted hyenas that are pregnant now. That's brilliant. Oh, there's a fight. I can see there's been fighting due to overcrowding in the kangaroos. Wow, there's 11 red kangaroos. Okay, let's... Oh, wow, there's lots of everyone. I think these are okay for numbers. Let's grab the red kangaroo. And they have lots of... Okay, outside of... Right, let's send this one to quarantine because they're injured. So then they'll go to quarantine and then they'll get take, taken to the vet. And then this one, I think we release to the wild, which is one of the babies that's just grown up, basically. Um, let's see if we have any other young... I think they're all properly adults now. Um, I think these two down the bottom are new as well, and they are going to end up trying to breed with their dad. So I'm going to release them too into the wild. And now all of those have been released, and we will release, release these ones. And this one as well, we'll release... It's all the ones where you can see we haven't renamed them. <laughs> um, this one is going to go to quarantine and they will get taken care of in there. While we're here, let's have a quick look at the uh, other animals. We've got the redneck wallabies. Um, I think everyone in here is okay. And then the quokka. Everyone here is also okay. All right, that's not too bad. Um, it's just the red kangaroo that were, that were breeding a lot. There is a lot of congestion here as well, and that's not going to be made better by putting a torque here. But I don't think, I think when we have more uh, animals over here, we'll pull people this way as well as just straight. When we've got more like uh, guest facilities and uh, habitats over here, if we put like another guest facilities thing here, I think that'll pull people this way as well um, when they when they funnel out of the entrance. So that's that's the plan anyway. I want to see one of these talks in action now. Where are we? It's December. It's going to be January very soon. Um, so when it's January, we can come and watch the Antita talk. <laughs> we should probably put in one more though. While we've got this design as well, let's uh, let's put in another talk up here for our Jaguars. And maybe that'll, they'll have a break and then they'll come up here and do the Jaguars. So if we're giving them a break, the last one was in May. Let's give them June, July and then... Maybe in August and maybe we start in September for this one. People are already sat down waiting. Look, that's so cool. And there's people gathered around still. Oh, I love this. <laughs> if we get the multi-select tool, we can grab 
Uh, we should be able to grab all of this. Ah, uh, we can't cop. We need to place the seating individually. That that's the only annoying thing about this. Okay. I don't want to miss the talk. So I'm going to pause and then duplicate this seating. And we'll have a couple of bits of seating over here. And I'll just put the decoration on and then we can go back to uh, watch the talk. There we go, I think that's better. Um, and then we've got, yeah, then it should be symmetrical for the seating. I think that's pretty good. And we've got some donation bins here as well, so they can donate. And this is the Jaguars. And again, they can throw food in for this one. If I uh, if I click here, can throw food. There's no educator assigned because we need to assign it to the work zone, but then they will start doing this one as well. And that's pretty cool. This is basically all of the South American animals that one educator could maybe do. And then another one could do the uh, Oceania ones because we've, we've got three habitats here for that. Though this is four species. So maybe they, maybe this one should also do the penguins or something. It might be a little bit too much for one person to do on their own. Uh, oh, the black rhinos arrived in the zoo. Oh, I'm torn. I'm torn. We're almost in, it's the 30th of December. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna see how this talk starts and then we are gonna have a look at our new rhinos. First of January, where is, where is the person? Where are you? Where is Sunny? Everyone's left. What an anti-climax. <laughs> okay, is, uh, is Sunny not coming then? What happened to Sunny? Let's check on him. Let's go into the work site. Let's go into our staff menu. Grab Sunny. Click here. What are you doing? Oh, he's waiting for the next one. Ah, uh, okay. He we missed this one. He was he was it was too close to for comfort, so he just didn't do the January talk. So he's gonna do the March. Right, okay. Well we'll let him do the March talk. This is why you need to leave a month between as well, because clearly if they don't get there in time, it just doesn't happen. This is an excess of guests though. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm going to pause. What's attracting protesters? Oh, it needs to be cleaned. It needs a keeper. Okay. Well, that's not good. How many keepers have we got on here? I think maybe they just need training up. Um, keepers. Yeah, everyone's not at maximum level. Let's just select our keepers. Train everyone up. Because this one says that they're worked quite hard. And we'll get someone in to, to clean their habitat. Look, they're right there. They'll clean that and the animal protesters go away. It's just slightly uh, not not enough like well-trained staff to do it. Oh my goodness, look at them. <gasps> wow, the black rhino. Oh, we really should. Um, I should really pause it and click on habitat and just, yeah, and then click on the animal. They can't escape. That's, that's good news. We like that. <laughs> and we've got the bats are in the same boat as the lizards. They just need cleanliness they need to be clean so we'll just call the keeper for this one when they're done with the lizards and they can clean them but it's it's not it's not as big as an alert as it actually looks <laughs> right look at these rhinos though i just want to have a look at them they are absolutely stunning aren't they wow they're beautiful animals such a shame that they're critically endangered like who would hunt them look at that well, they are incredibly cool and these ones are safe with us and we will hopefully save the species in this zoo, but not if we have terrain like this. So I'm going to uh, to do some terrain editing now to make this what they like, which is going into terrain, painting, and then just changing the values we have here until they're, until they're what they like. Okay, I think that's a pretty good blend for them. It's quite uh, it's quite hard to actually get these all lined up, but they because they have kind of a lot of everything and they want like a good amount of everything. Um, I'm about to have a capybara mature. Um, so this is pretty good for them. I think this habitat terrain is what they like. I don't know about the trees. They are happy with these trees actually. And that coverage is pretty good for them. 
So I'm very tempted to just leave the trees that were naturally in there um, as they are, and then maybe put a few rocks and a few um, a few like low level plants in or something. But I don't want to adjust the nature too much if we don't need to, because this is what was there naturally. And you know, if we came in in the real world and built this habitat, there's no way you'd be like, right, I'm going to rip up that tree <laughs> just to put a different one in over here. Like you, you just leave them as they are. You've got not only a free tree, but also the environment. You've got to think about that and. This is, this is how they are, so I don't want to destroy that and anything that naturally lives there or anything. It's just much better to leave it as it is. Um, oh, they've done a nice poop for us because I zoomed in on them. Uh, classic, classic poop. This talk should be underway now for the capybara. Oh, wow, it is crowded, but he is doing a talk. <laughs> and he can... Oh, the, he can't throw food in. The path is blocked. I'm not surprised. He couldn't do anything in here. He's being absolutely swarmed, but hopefully that is helping our education. Oh, it's massively helping our happiness, I think. It's the only thing we've changed. Why I guess so much happier now? I have no idea why. We need to call our keepers. I think the keepers on the central hub are struggling slightly. So I'm going to look at our finances. Um, our expenses and income. I think we can support another keeper. Let's let's have an, one more keeper. It's all about animal welfare here anyway. And let's put them on the central hub and set everyone to train up, which is just basically that keeper. Um, and then hopefully that extra pair of hands will be just what they need. And they'll be they'll be on their way to uh, to looking after everyone 100%. Oh, our Jaguar is about to have babies. <gasps> oh, they're probably uncomfortable because they're running around. Oh, they're, they're so pretty, aren't they, as well, our Jaguar? Oh, big jump, big jump. Well, let's see if they settle down and have their babies. Hopefully not in the long grass where we can't really see them. <laughs> oh, no, they're going to have a bit of an eat before they uh, before they give birth. I just want a little snack first. Disgusting snack as well, I have to say. <laughs> Absolutely hideous snack. Oh, there's another one here. But I'm sure it's exactly what they want. It's perfect for them. Don't, want to, don't know what kind of dinosaur we've uh, we've killed to get this food for them, but uh, I'm if it works. Oh, I think this could be it. They're laying down. <gasps> There's the little cub. Oh my goodness. Is it just one cub? I think it's just one. Yep, just one cub. Look at you. Oh, you can barely see them because they're long grass. But what a what a cute little face. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're tiny. <laughs> oh, new life in the zoo. That's what we love. Okay, I think we need to get some enrichment in for our black rhinoceros because they are just going to be bored sit sitting around. Let's get the species tab up and select the... Oh, no, they'll be on B, the black rhinoceros. There we go. We can get some feeders in as well. So let's put, let's put the feeders over here because they're confident around humans too. Let's put a hanging barrel feeder here. Uh, another graze feeder over here. And some melon. And probably a, a feeding thing would be good as well, like a feeding trough. Uh, just in case they uh, the food enrichment isn't enough. Right, and then we'll go back for food. We need, oh, I need a large barrel feeder as well. Let's, let's whack that in here too. Let's put it around here. Then we're going to have, we need a water area to put these ones into, but let's put a skittle in, a rubbing pillar, and a plant screen over here. And then the herb scent marker too. And that should be pretty much everything that they need, other than we'll put a sprinkler and the waterfall and metal frame in. But I'm sure, yeah, they're 100% on enrichment now. So they just need some hard shelter and they need some water. Now, I don't think our water pump... Oh, our water pump will reach. Of course it will. It's right there. Okay, so we can have probably a decent water area. If they've got a little uh, water enrichment, they must like splashing around a little bit. But they, I don't think they actually need water properly. No, they don't want to swim. They just want to splash around a bit. So we'll, um, we'll have a little water area over here that's a little bit bigger than some of our others because they obviously enjoy it, but not, not too crazy. I think that's good. That gives them quite a good amount of water. And 
Yeah, I think I quite like that. Let, let's have that be, um, that can be their water area there. And then we can put our facilities in there. Oh, you can put our enrichment in there as well. We can have the sprinkler maybe here on the water edge. And then we can have a nice big frame in the middle that has the, the sprinkler. So if they want, they can splash around. Oh, that's woken them up. <laughs> that's made them interested. And they can splash around in that. That seems cool. Now they do need a, uh, a shelter as well. And again, keeping in the Africa theme, I think we'll just use one of these shelters here that are suitable for them. Let's put a small shelter over here that they can, they can sit in um, with some bedding in it. And then we can maybe have a larger shelter over here that's uh, a bit more like their general sleeping area. Yeah, I think that's good. Or well, maybe we should adjust the angle of it actually. So they can still, so they can see out a bit more. A bit more light, isn't it, this way? And we can put some, some bedding in here too. That's the stuff, that looks good. That should be everything they need for hard shelter. I can't imagine they need more than that. No, no, they're good now, they're good. Oh no, our main wolf has died, stilts. Oh, bless. Oh, that means both of our main wolf parents are gone now. I think we've just got one one baby. Oh, bless. Okay, well, we'll do a memorial for them as we always do. Um, so I'm gonna go into zoo memorials. I'm gonna turn off random rotation actually because I know I've got that switched on. Make sure I've got a line surface on. And then I can go into zoo memorials and click stilts and create a memorial. And we can put them next to Ginger, their partner. And now if we go in here into the uh, file tab, we can see we can add our own file in. So I'm going to go to this location and put the photo that I've already taken of stilts in here. And if I refresh the folder, it will be available for us to use. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I've added that in. So stilts should be here now. Bless him. Right, there he is. He was 14.9. So he outlived Ginger a little bit. They were a very similar age, weren't they? Bless. Look at their little face. Aww. Okay, well, they're in there. I think that means that we need a new uh, main wolf, though, because we've only got Anna. I'm going to wait till Anna's a little bit older. Um, I don't actually know what group size they live in. Perhaps we need someone now. Let's have a look at them in the Zoopedia. No, it's up to one male and up to one female together. So let's... Let's just have them live as they are. Oh, please take stilts out. We'll have them live until they grow up and then we'll bring a new male in. But for now, it's just going to be them. But they've got lots of friends in this habitat with the other animals we have. And they all get uh, the bonus from being together. So they obviously like living with one another. Poor thing, though. Okay, I think our rhinoceros are very happy. Please, can you suggest some names for these guys as well in the comments? Because we will rename them um, our happy little rhinos. <laughs> And yes, we will definitely, we'll probably rename them in the next episode. Look how cute they are. Like, that's so cool. I love these. These might be my favorite animals we've had yet. Um, and maybe, I wonder whether we need to up our ticket price. Uh, because, yeah, we did just add in a very cool new species. Let's make it 54 and 27. And we'll go with that. Still half price for kids. Now, one other very easy win I think we can get for our zoo for education is to go into facilities, media de devices and education and get some conservation education boards and put them around this area. Because at the minute, this is a bit of a dead area for education. If you look at our heat maps, you can see got lots of education everywhere, but not in this big area where there's lots of guests. So let's try and grab some of them if we can <laughs> with, uh, with some education.
Okay, I think that's added quite a lot to our education. If we look at the uh, guest education coverage now, we can see we've got lots of blue here. Oh no, there's dangerous fighting due to overcrowding. Okay, our capybara have been breeding yet again, or all the babies have grown up now, which is probably more likely. Um, so let's go into our animal tab. I think our problem is we've got lots of young adults now that have just matured at the same time. So I'm going to grab all of them and release them all at once because I think that's probably the best way. Also, I can imagine it's really cute if we grab all of them and, you know, well, like they're all brothers and sisters. And they're all being released at the same time. I just think it's really cute. <laughs> OK, we've got our new male as well that we still need to rename Raul. So we will do that too. But let's release these guys into the wild. Wow, 357 credits as well. It's a lot of capybara that are gone. We need them to start breeding again. And well, we've got a lot of babies, actually. When I look around, <laughs> there are lots of capybara babies always. So I think we're OK. We could maybe put some music speakers in, though. That may not be a bad shout because I wouldn't mind listening to some music when I was chilling with my uh, with my food. So we maybe put some music speakers in to uh, to play. What are we going to play? Ah, we should do, uh, it should be themed to the area. So we'll get this side to play the South America playlist. And we'll put another speaker over here. Oh, I can't see. There we go. Uh, let's put the other speaker there. And that'll play the same. And then we will put an Oceania one here that will play different music from that region. Let's do the Australia playlist. And we got one there too. So I think that's probably good. Let's just move that into the same cracks that we've had the others on. There we go. Got a bit of music in there now at least. That, I think that's pretty cool. Um, what does it sound like? I don't know if this is the playlist or not. It has power though, so it should be fine. I'm going to trust that it's working. <laughs> I think we're improving our guest education rating as well, probably by adding in the conservation boards and by putting in these talks. So that is good. It's definitely going up, which is exactly what we want. I think perhaps it's time that we add in the environment, like the rest of the nature we said about for the, uh, the black rhino. So I'm going to put filter by Africa, grassland and desert. In fact, we should probably just have grassland because that's that's actually the climate we're in. Um, so it makes more sense that the trees would grow here. Um, and then we will put in the rocks and plants that uh, we just to spice up the habitat a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting. And we can maybe change the terrain height very slightly and then just check that it's the right uh, terrain painting again because we've made the water area and we're going to adjust it with this as well. So we'll probably do that again at the end. I think I might leave it at that actually with them. I don't want to put too much in because I don't really want that much coverage. So this is kind of maximum for them. I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, yeah, I think this is good. And it gives them just a little bit more interest to the habitat. You can see like the plants are growing predominantly where the water source is, uh, where they've got that bit more like lush element. But I think I think this is good for them and it gives them nice open spaces still to run around and a slight hill and all of the terrain is still good for them. So this is this habitat is now exactly what they need. The only thing they're slightly lacking is nutrition. And that's because our vets haven't finished uh, researching them. So we need to set our vets to start work on researching. Oh, we haven't done the aardvark and the meerkat. Meerkat, okay. We're gonna do the aardvark and the meerkat. Oh, we've done the meerkat, okay, cool. The aardvark and the hyenas, and then we will start on the, the black rhino. We, we've almost finished with the cheetah, so we're, we're almost there with that. 
And then once we on we go through the research, we can unlock education boost, which will help our education. But also we can uh, we can unlock new food for our animals. So if you go into food, we should just check that everyone is on the highest rating they can be on. Um, it is more expensive, but it's much better for the animals. And the whole point of this zoo is to be as ethical as possible. So we want to we want to give our animals the highest quality food and we should be able to take the hit. Um, uh, cash wise <laughs> uh, our ongoing expenses are currently half our income so that's good and i think in the next episode we can we can add more guest amenities that will bring in more income too maybe have like another little section here that uh, gives a bit of uh, a bit of amenities for guests i think that'll probably be good and i'd like to create more like these wild areas as well like we have here um maybe maybe add in some of these around and kind of spice up some of the quite dull areas we have currently around the zoo um, even small pockets like this could easily just be like a bit of wild in there. Uh, I think it just add a little something and make it a little bit nicer. For now though, I think it's probably about time that we learn a little bit about our beautiful black rhinos. The black rhinoceros is also known as the hook-lipped rhinoceros and is native to the grasslands and scrublands of southern and eastern Africa. They have two horns on their face, with the anterior horn being much longer than the posterior horn. Black Rhinoceros stands 1.4 meters to 1.8 meters tall at the shoulder. It's 3 to 3.75 meters long and weighs between 800 kilos and 1,400 kilos. Black Rhinoceros growl and scream when they're scared or in conflict situations. And black rhinos have mutualistic relationships with birds such as oxpeckers and egrets that remove parasites from their skin. Black rhinos mainly feed on browse, which is leaves from shrubs, bushes and trees, and they have tough prehensile lips that are adapted to this kind of foraging. Black rhinos can be extremely aggressive towards each other. 50% of male and 30% of female black rhinos that die naturally are thought to have died from conflict related injuries. But unfortunately, that's not the only thing that kills black rhinoceros, and they are considered to be critically endangered, with several of the subspecies already being extinct. The species faces multiple issues, poaching for their horns being the most significant. With large areas of their habitat being in war zones, their population is negatively affected by human action, as well as a lack of legislation and law enforcement for their protection. Additionally, their specific browse-based diet means that they are vulnerable to food competition from other species, and can be difficult to raise in captivity due to their susceptibility to mineral deficiencies and diseases. So unfortunately, it's not looking amazing for the black rhinoceros, but in this this zoo, we're going to try and make a difference. I think we're going to call it there today though, now that we've built this beautiful black rhinoceros habitat and we've improved our guest education. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, it really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.